Hello and thank you for having me here today for this event. My name is Georgios Ferruzos. I'm a PhD researcher at the Sonic Arts Research Center at Queen's University Belfast. And today I'll be talking to you about my paper, Sounding Belfast During COVID-19 Lockdown 1 and 2. I'll go a bit about my overall research, talk about the paper, and the future of this work. To give some context, while I did my master's at Queen's University Belfast, I focus on the Peace Walls in West Belfast. I created a range of audio projects with spatial audio using ambisonics and binaural um, methods to create these projects in order to focus on person, place, and story. And I want to continue this kind of idea throughout my PhD. However, when I began in February 2020, uh, this was a month prior to COVID-19. When COVID-19 did happen, the initial proposal I had had to change and adapt to the circumstances and the rules that were in place. I did this by adapting and focusing on urban places across Belfast, recording my sound walks and kind of uh, creating a time frame of events uh, throughout the different stages of lockdown and e exit strategies. So basically, sound walking is moving from this kind of idea of hearing your space into actively listening to your space. So you want to identify the sounds that kind of characterize or make up the sonic environment. And this is ever changing. And this allowed for an opportunity during COVID-19 where the spaces that were lacking human presence were able to understand and listen into new interactions of the urban and natural sound environments. So what I did was focus on the two different lockdowns that happened in Northern Ireland, uh, specifically in Belfast. One, the first lockdown happened in March of 2020, and the second one happened in October 2020. And what I did was use my sound walking approach. So that's this moving from hearing into actively listening my, to my spaces um, and record those into soundscape files. So uh, at the moment, there's 15 locations that I've recorded and created two minute listening experience to kind of capture those uh, specific moments and create a time frame of events. On my website, this is stylized as a sonic journalistic approach so that you can comparatively listen to the instances of the lockdown and also the exit strategies. So during the summer of 2020, when we exited the first lockdown, there's the moments of the changes in the spaces and there's recordings of that as well. So initially my research is focused on many different aspects on acoustic ecology, immersive technologies, as well as soundscapes and sound walking. I'm trying to grab a lot of different disciplines and merge them into creative projects and research for my own uh, PhD uh, thesis. So with my research, I've been reading a lot about acoustic ecology and environment, as well as perception of sound. So Barry Chalks' book, Acoustic Communication, allows that kind of understanding of the environment and how to analyze our sonic uh, spaces. And then considering Salome Vogelin's uh, work on phenomenological uh, perception of sound is understanding how sound relates to our own sonic knowledge. What are we understanding and making meaning of our own spaces and how this affects our understanding of being present in a moment. And from that literature, I took a auto humanistic approach into my own research. Gorin Chanas stated that self-observation at a time that we cannot focus on the other or focus on research of another person uh, is viable information that we could use to understand circumstances in our daily life. So what I've been doing is taking all these field recordings and kind of observations and I'm rendering that into an interpretive analysis. So I'm collecting the material and then creating understanding from that gathered material. So the project itself is a, is a bunch of audio files I've been recording and also analyzing kind of real time and post uh, editing of my perception and kind of understanding of what's going on during COVID. At a time where 
COVID-19 alienates a lot of people and keeping your distance from one another. It was the only way I saw myself being able to conduct any type of field work during this past year. So the way I designed this project was using the stay at home order rules uh, from Northern Ireland, which only allowed for certain activities or um, reasons to leave the house. So what I did was use my one daily exercise as my method of field work. I would take my field recorder and walk a certain path. And for every couple of instances, I would take a short little break to record that particular moment. And that would be around five minutes. I would take that five minute audio and then edit it down to two minute listening uh, experiences. And the reason for that is because within five minutes, a lot of different sounds can occur. Also, there's the problem of environmental conditions or just uh, vehicles with their horns and engines uh, kind of disrupting the sound. So I want to make sure I had enough clean audio to then render and uh, distribute. The difference in the lockdowns is that with lockdown one, I had to do separate observations just because of timing, uh, not knowing when lockdowns were going to end. However, with the lockdown two, I was able to do a kind of sequence observation because I knew when the lockdown was going to begin. So I did a pre, during, and of the lockdown recording. So for each of the lockdowns, there's different themes. For lockdown one, I want to focus on something that would be familiar and not too distant to understand the differences within the spaces. So I used the Visit Belfast tourist map as my site location identifier. And the reason I did this as well is because locals and tourists would connect to these places since these are popular locations around Belfast. For lockdown two, however, I kind of changed that because uh, the lockdown was targeting more of the hospitality and education sector. So this is where I focus more on pubs, bars, restaurants, and the school districts. And there are some cross um, sites just because of how they're situated. So it obviously gave me some different uh, recordings of some spaces. So for the next portion, I will play an audio file and then I will discuss it. So the reason I want to play this particular file was because 
On October 16th, 2020 at 6 p.m. was the start of the second lockdown. And I had recorded the location the day prior to kind of give this sequence recording. And then there is another recording a few days later. So you could hear the three different days uh, in this transition. However, what's very particular about this file is the moment of us entering the second lockdown, which I wasn't able to do with the first lockdown. So to the left, you would see this kind of uh, pub called The Points. And this is where people were kind of finishing their last drinks. Whereas across the street, there was another bar, Filthies McNasties. Uh, and it's kind of hard to kind of detail the image, but there's a man trying to board up the, the bar. So we're, we're in this awkward stage of 6 p.m. on a Friday evening, entering a city that would be next a ghost town again uh, after we had months of let's say freedom from covid and when things were sort of normal so the the sound recording kind of depicts all that information and between the, the the three of the files you'll be able to understand a little bit more of the context behind it so the paper is limited uh, so is the research itself because of just the recording constraints. Uh, with environmental conditions in Northern Ireland, there's always rain and wind uh, that you have to consider. Also with COVID-19, because of the rules of two meter distancing, I couldn't always record in the same location. This was more in uh, lockdown one, where when the lockdown happened, I was able to choose any location I wanted to, but during the exit strategies, when people were going back into these spaces, it was very difficult to get the exact same spot every single time. With lockdown two, this was a little different because I started the day before, and since lockdown was beginning, people weren't in, the, in those spaces. It is interesting to kind of get all these different perceptual lenses or different recordings, even though they're not uh, exactly done the exact the, the same way thankfully the guidelines i used uh so the constraints of the five minutes was still uh viable throughout all of the recordings so what's been interesting about my research is not only the fact of gathering this these audio files but it's also been this aspect of distributing them so in the age of COVID-19, we've all moved on to digital platforms and we're trying to find new ways of engaging and having people access material. A, lar a large part of my work has been contributed to sound maps. So there are some sound maps that have um, sounds from all over the world at different times and, and, and different days. Whereas Pete Starley's COVID-19 sound map only focuses on sounds recorded during COVID-19. So this is one of the platforms I did use. And it's very interesting to note that uh, it seems like I've been the only one able to record Belfast during COVID-19 and upload that material to kind of give us a time frame of events and audio understanding of our environment. It's been interesting to also note the relationships with our spaces when there's a lack of human presence. There's new interactions that we're starting to listen to uh, in our built society from the natural and urban sounds. Because this is a time that uh, we've never had before where we've had empty cities to listen to. And then kind of looking into more of an on-site approach, I've used the Echoes app. So the Echoes app is a sound walking app where you could uh, create your own walking tour. You upload material and you start putting these bubbles around uh, different locations. So in this particular snapshot here, there's five different bubbles at Queen's University Belfast and each of these bubbles is GPS triggered. So if you have your phone and headphones on, once you walk into these spaces, you're hearing where I've recorded th that sound uh, or soundscape. And you can move around freely as much as, uh, as you like, and you could go to all the other 15 locations as well and kind of get that same experience. So at any time in any day, you could go and re-listen to what COVID sounded like. Again, finding different ways of distributing the work in COVID-19 has been extremely interesting. Where we used to have physical exhibitions or galleries has transitioned now into this virtual world. So my works have been used and kind of branched out to virtual galleries, exhibitions, sound maps, and then other streaming services as well. So YouTube and SoundCloud have been interesting to get a different sense of uh, 
people that want to engage or learn from COVID. While my research is still ongoing, there's some immediate impacts um, from my work. Most importantly is using art as a form of documentation of human history. It's creating a time frame of events that we can then later revisit and, co- and it's also contributing to general knowledge or the sonic knowledge of our spaces. There's also this aspect of creating new ways of on-site and off-site engagement so that even with COVID-19 rules and regulations, people are still able to access a, a form of art. As I'm still working on this material, I have locked down three audio files to kind of edit. Uh, This is particular to St. Patrick's Day recordings. Also the one year kind of recordings I've I've started from March, 2020. I also have a few recordings to do during the summer because of the exit strategies that we had last summer. So I just wanna close that loop of the one year, what's happened. And then I wanna take this material and kind of get creative with it So remixing my own audio uh, in creative ways to create new forms of uh, artistic expressions. I also have some audio files from Montreal, Canada, so from where I'm from, uh, because I visited back in the holidays and I was able to record some places there as well. Even though they're not the same locations, uh, Belfast and Montreal, I would like to still do a comparative uh, approach of what the, the cities sound like during COVID. And for the next phase of my research, I'm trying to get more of a socially engaged arts approach using community interviews uh, to talk about their experience during COVID and find ways of merging that with the audios I've already recorded. If you're interested in the work and would like to visit or listen to any of the pieces, you can visit the website listed here. I would like to thank you for your time and having me part of this event.